Well, I've now headed south out of Lanymenech and I'm going south into Wales and on the way to Welsh Pool. I've reached four crosses and I'm hoping that there might be something remaining of the station. This is a picture of it in the height of steam days, although I'm told that there's very little, if anything, left of the station now. Well, I've had a good look around the village of Four Crosses and I really can't find any trace of the railway at all. So from here I'm going to head southwards down to Ardleen. Well, I've taken the short trip down to Ardleen and here's a picture of it in its heyday. Well, I'm hoping I might have a little bit more luck in finding some evidence of the station. According to the book, there's still part of the platform left and the station building is now part of a private residence. I'm down near the canal and I know that the line followed the canal so I'm going to go and have a quick snoop. And indeed here we have Station House, now the private residence. And we can see down there next to the garden the old platform. And just to the north of Ardling Station you can see the track would have followed that hedge all the way down through that ditch area and up to the station which is now Station House. It's a far cry of course from its heyday as seen in the picture in the book. Let's refer back to the map because we're at Ardling here and I want to find Pool Quay Station. Unfortunately Pool Quay Station isn't actually in Pool Quay. Here's Pool Quay here south of Ardleen and you can see that the dismantled railway runs the other side of the river over land I can't get to and the station would have been here a few hundred yards away from Pool Quay itself. Now this is going to be very very difficult to get to because it's on private land. Well this was the station at Pool Quay with its double track in the early 1960s and before I start going trekking over private land, it does say here that the station has been completely demolished. So I really don't think there's much point in actually trying to get somewhere which is very difficult to find nothing at all. So from this point I'm now going to go down and find the junction at Buttington. So if we go back to the map, we can see the dismantled railway here coming past Pool Quay, down through this land which I can't get onto, private land and it joins the main railway here at Buttington Junction, this being the Shrewsbury to Welshpool Railway. So I'm going to get down to here now and see if there's any remains of this junction here that I can see. Well, because of the terrain, it's just actually quite difficult to get to the junction itself at Buttington. But you can see here I'm close to the Welshpool Shrewsbury line, which we can just see here running from right to left. In the distance, we can see the trees where the Cambrian line run and the Cambrian line followed those trees down and joined the Welsh Bull Shrewsbury line just round the corner. From here we're about a mile and a half away from Welsh Bull. Well here at Welsh Bull, next to the station we have the old station building which is now largely used as shops. now next to the main road. Well that's the end of my journey down this stretch of the Cambrian line and this of course is just part of a large network of railways that ran on the borderlands between England and Wales first nationalised and then closed down. Certainly plenty of old lines for me to still explore. Good luck to the preservation societies based in Oswestry. Let's hope that they can get the line down to Clancliffe and even better, let's get the line from Oswestry up to Gabowin so we're joining on with the National Rail Network. Might be a pipe dream for some but hopefully it will turn into reality. <laughs>